Hi, it's Dave here. This is my wife, Kathy. Hello. And this is The Cinema, the podcast where we walk home from the movies. Now, it's one more day to Halloween. Halloween, Halloween. Uh, so we are going to go to see a horror movie. Um, we had a few choices. There was Saw 10. No, thanks. No. The Exorcist, The Beginning. No, thanks. Don't think so. And then this one, A Five Nights at Freddy's, also not interested. Um, but here we are, we have to go to something. <laughs> and this seems to be very slim popular. Slim pickings this, this Halloween. <laughs> yeah, it's very like, slim pickings. I just have no interest in seeing this. I did see that this knocked um, Taylor Swift's uh, movie out of the number oh, one Oh, did it? Well, that's why, that's why we're doing it. We're following yeah. the money, like Lester yeah. Freeman. This is the most, this is the biggest box office movie right now <laughs> um, it, is, it appears to be a huge I mean I, I've ha, uh, half heard of this it's a video game franchise which has been adapted now into a movie um, incredibly successful as far as I can tell you mean the video game franchise yes I'm not familiar with, uh, with what really what it's about it's a horror game I've never played it um, don't well, have much time for video games these days you always say the video game movies are bad right uh, historically, yes, traditionally. Mm-hmm. But then okay. The Last of Us came along, and, and that's probably the best one. Okay. But yeah, the, uh, yeah, that's a TV usually show. bad. Yeah, um, I don't know much about this. Josh Hutchinson is in it, right? From uh, the Hunger Games. There's a new Hunger Games movie coming out. I know. Yeah. Yeah. That's anyway, weird. Let's go see this movie. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm hoping. Do you know what? I'm hoping for a few jump scares, and we just had a really good time watching The Fall of the House of Usher. So I'm kind of in the mood for. A bit of horror. Well, here's the promising thing. It's um, by Bloomhouse. Okay. Um, and they are very reliable horror studio. Yeah, that is that is good. As we all know, uh, I, I think thought... the last one we saw from them was Megan, which they're throwing about on the poster of this. To, which was great fun. To get into kids. I would, um, yeah, and I, okay, I want that kind of vibe. And I also saw that it's 15A in Ireland. Which is yeah. A good sign because it means it's like scary but not too scary. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm so here we are. Some scares. All right, we'll see you All in, right, the other see in a minute. Bye. Hi, this is Mike. I was just calling to see if that job that you offered was still available. Yes. The security guard. I will take anything. This place was huge in the 80s with the kids. They shut it down years ago. The owner's just not ready to let it go yet. I will work and you will sleep. I understand. Give me your hand. All you have to do is keep your eyes on the monitor. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's, where fantasy and fun come to life. Okay. All right, we're back. We have just spent what really did feel like five nights Mm -hmm. at Freddy's. Um, If it's your first time on this podcast, there are no spoilers until we turn on to spoiler Street. So don't worry, we will not spoil Five Nights at Freddy's for you. Mm-hmm. Um, here's the thing. If you're listening to this and you're a fan of this uh, series, then you already know, so listen away. Do you mean the if, video game series? Yeah, the video game series. If you if you have never heard of this and you're listening to this, just keep listening to the spoilers because don't go see this movie because it's so dreadfully bad. Yeah, and usually we don't like outright say people shouldn't go and see movies because like we always want people to support cinema. But... This is not worth. This money. is not worth anyone's money yeah. or time. Uh, no, no, no. Let's, this, get, let's hang talk on. about it. Let's start we... the positives. Yeah, yeah okay. let's start with the positives. So, well, I think a few positives. There's a, someone will enjoy this. I think teenagers. No, because <laughs> okay. we were in a. Okay, it's on. actually a bank holiday here in Ireland, <laughs> yeah. and um, so the schools are off, so our screening was actually primarily teenagers. So usually, when you go to a screening that has a lot of teenagers, particularly like a horror film, like say when you went to see Scream last time or whatever, or Megan. Um, Megan, like, Megan's a good yeah kind of there'd one. be good reactions from the teenagers they're kind of gasping and kind of there's usually a good audience vibe at a horror yes there you're was right. no vibe, vibe at this movie <laughs> you're so right occasionally there were people whispering to each other because they were so bored <laughs> but there was no vibe and yes I was one of those people whispering to someone else um, what's interesting about this film is Josh Hutcherson's really good right like it starts out at a very slow pace which I was like do you know what this is kind of interesting for a horror film it's like boy it's really setting us up and boy it's still really setting us up and like 45 minutes that and I was like slow pace continues this, right till the end still really setting us up but in a way it doesn't inevitably work it doesn't work because 
it, it's got it all wrong. When a horror is doing it like that, there needs to be like suspense built in. Or dread. Or dread. Of and which there are neither. neither. It's yeah. just watching someone going about their business. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of like, I am no horror expert. Horror is a genre I watch very little of because I'm, I often get too scared and don't like to watch it. But I've obviously watched a lot of horror and I mentioned Fall of the House of Usher, you know, before we went to see the film and that's like by Mike Flanagan who's like an incredible horror director and it's quite the come down to watch Fall of the House of Usher and how suspense is built into eight episodes of a show there mm. versus not built into at all like this movie was just under two hours but it felt like two and a half three hours it could have it could have lost 45 minutes and then the premise was kind of unusual and I actually found it quite interesting like it was kind describe of a mad the, setting describe the synopsis there I guess for people um, it's like a guy who He's like the primary carer for his younger sister. He doesn't have very much money. And he has to take a job um, in this kind of creepy, closed down... Kind of amusement, amusement centre for kids. Pizza restaurant that has like animatronics. Yeah, right? from it's the quite 80s. Odd. Yeah, it's yeah. quite odd. And it seems, I think it's set in the 90s. And the, and this, and the anim- five animatronic creatures seem to be a bit creepy. A bit creepy maybe, and like... Maybe they're Maybe alive. a bit dangerous. Yeah. And... That's actually all a good setup, and like the cast is all good, um, but it just kind of goes. No, I just yeah. Here's a, you've na- you've, so you've nailed it. You it's nailed so it. Boring. It is the pace of this yeah. movie is so incredibly slow, and you know we spoke about uh, Megan, which is the last Bloomhouse movie we saw, and I thought that was uh, pretty good. But like next to this, it's a <laughs> monumental <laughs> masterpiece, masterpiece yeah. because you look at it and you're like, that movie had energy. It had. It, it's the same and also, audience. It should be the it's same exactly, audience. Exactly. It's a, they've put it on the poster for this movie. Yeah. They're like from the people that brought you Megan. Remember that? Yeah. Remember that fucking Casey. and also very similar. An animatronic thing. Yeah. Um, who who wants to look after a child? Yeah. And And the primary carer. You know, there's been um, a tragedy yeah. in the background, and and this person similar. is a primary carer and doesn't really want to be. But it's Megan almost was, identical. Megan but Megan, was, Megan is leaping around the screen. She's literally she's like so interesting. And she's interesting and ter- kind of and creepy. Megan's scary and funny. This film's neither. But in particular, while it's there was slow. a few, there was a few chuckles in this film. There was not one jump scare. Well, here's the like, thing. Not one. It's funny you say that because this. I think that's the other issue this film has, besides being like a slower than a glacier. Like, like it, it plods along like the, you know. Okay, actually, it's perfect because Megan is is in the car in that movie is sprightly and running around corridors and has weird, cool movements. Mm-hmm. These creatures just like bump, bump. They walk around like Robocop, yeah. and they're not interesting or threatening. And the movie walks around at their pace. Uh-huh. But the other issue with this movie is it is um so it takes itself so seriously. It is like this. It 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 it's like. This, there's no jokes nobody's cracking a laugh yeah. like like you know if it, it but, but it, it's such, so jarring because it's such an inherently goofy setting yeah. and premise that if, if they'd lent into it and made it like a horror comedy there could be something fun yeah, in here it could have worked better but no think- it's like it's really interested in its lore it actually deals with some very weighty yeah. subject matter which we'll talk about in, in, in Spoiler Street yeah. which again super jarring because I'm like this is very uncomfortable stuff well, could have lent into like the kind of style of it or something like this this there's it, another masterpiece compared to this there's established properties that do a lot of the stuff in this that like you feel like they could have kind of lent on yeah to like get some inspiration for me and i find it hard to identify because i'm not like a big horror person but but it's just, I feel it's like just lifeless missing it's is, lifeless like, i think a lot was missing in the audio like there was whole scenes with like no music behind them and like like if, I was like if they cut half the scene again I'm speaking like I know how to direct if they cut half of the footage and like put a bit of oomph behind it with some music like something here could be good like the scenes of the animatronic things dancing but it's like muted background music it's like this should be the vibrant like yeah. big music scene and like there's nothing happening here I just can't believe how many people around us were just sighing <laughs> <laughs> like everyone was just so bored. You're so right because I I assumed there would like there be an audience for this and maybe look I'm sure I hope please let us know by the way if somebody um maybe fans of the game will enjoy this because it's probably got references and stuff. Exactly. But. If you're see I think if you're in, into the game and we're we, we're missing that reference completely there's probably lots of cool things where you'd be like you know like for example we started watching what did we start watching last night Jen. Gen V. Gen V. Yeah. And I was Which like, is great. This is not for me. I, I'm not interested in it. And you were like, no, but, but because you really like 
The boys. The boys. There's a lot in there. And I kept going and I had a great time. So we different reference points. So I totally take the point. And if somebody is into the game, actually, please message us. And we know one of our long term listeners, Zombie Kitty, has messaged us about this before. So message us and tell us what you think relating to the game. But if you put the game out of it and you've not played the game, I ju- I'd struggle to understand who the audience is to be honest because but, teenagers like a scare you know like when we were teenagers yeah. we saw like scream and we loved it but they're not really this uh, has got no there's no scary moment the violent moments are so timid like I was like this film I actually think 15A was the wrong rating like I think a 12 it's got like 12 a 12 would have been fine now it's probably quite it would be quite scary for a 12 year old parts of it potentially I don't know but like yeah I don't know I don't know who it's for but I guess the video game I mean I haven't played it but like I, I, you mean, I think survival I think it's a good setting for a video game I can I imagine that too. You, you playing you playing a a, a, a night night security person mm-hmm. in an abandoned thing and things are moving in the background that's that's fun I love those kind I of survival think, horror games I was thinking that and if you're like the yeah. player you'd get a lot of jump scares from the setting yeah but as a viewer of the film and Josh Hutcherson I really like but he's a very he's, he's, he brings nothing to he's this he's a very subdued actor and like yeah. he's very serious it's like he's in the, he's in a different film than but that's what, what I, I'm that's what I mean when, when I wanted this film to be a bit fun and have a bit of life like we um, you know he was in that um time travel show like like it was a Terminator kind of show mm-hmm. do you remember that it was kind of a comedy yeah. where he was like a video game he just plays a lot of video games yeah. and saves the future or something and it was just like he's really fun in that yeah. he's a good actor he can bring a lot of life and energy to things but his character but his he character, plays his character right but he oh yeah he, he did a good job with what is a character who is just um, mired with tragedy and that is not the right character for this movie. No, I, but I don't think. But that's okay. But there needs to be someone with a bit of life around him. Yeah. The scenes with Matthew Illard brought it to life. Matthew Lillard? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got energy, that man. Like, Jesus Christ, he's brilliant. So okay. that's when it kind of uplifted for me. But other than that, I think we should go to spoilers because I don't yeah. want to spoil anything. Um, I hate to say that we don't recommend it, but we don't. I don't. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't in all good conscience all good say conscience, anyone should no. spend even one night <laughs> um, also like as a framework that they like they could have made it very clear on which night we were on oh yeah like what what was the purpose and most of the nights are just nothing happened we were like by the end it's wait is like, it night it's four or like, five it's been like four nights and and it's gone okay like he's, <laughs> he's like he's having he's making money I guess um, so uh, spo- well, right we're going to turn on to Spoiler Street now um, but before we do I'm uh, going to take a quick break for an ad alright so spoilers now for five nights at Freddy's so we're going to spoil every single night one to five let's go them, through them consecutively night one, to three, night one nothing happens <laughs> no night one literally also can we talk about we we were so we were whispering a little bit to be fair we, we, everyone uh, was though but like it was totally cool in that screening we were we were whispering to each other like like he deserves why is he sleeping on the job she keeps telling him stop sleeping on the job you are being negligent and the, the, the most <laughs> negligent he was was when he brings his sister to the place and then falls asleep no Dave he doesn't fall asleep he takes sleeping, takes sleeping pills puts headphones on she even tries to wake him up at one moment <laughs> she's like hey I'm just going for a walk See, and he's like is, I'm out man I've drugged out what bugs me right is, is sitting underneath this film of like every setting ever of like some form of like a theme park thing in the 80s with kids whatever Yeah, it was like this very interesting thing that I'd say the film touched on in totality for like at the beginning 60 seconds and it came back later but not deep enough He's like suffering from this deep trauma of his 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 brother having been abducted, and he's like, he's come up with what is frankly fascinating a way to revisit the same dream every night, whereby he has this process where he looks at a poster of Nebraska, he listens to forest noises, and then he um, takes a specific tablet, and then he's able to have the same dream every night. Uh, sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's unbelievable. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. And yet. The film just treats that like that's a normal thing and we need no further explanation. And then he, we, we realise too late in the film what's going on, which is, oh, he's deliberately, he's taking sleeping tablets on the job because he can't even go like, because we were like, I was thinking, but if he does night shift, surely he should sleep during the day. Yeah, so why not just do that? that he'll just no, sleep to be, fair, night. to be fair, the movie's saying, the movie's saying he is, feels closer to his missing brother the fir- in this yeah, place. Yeah, but the first night though... I think the first night, in fairness, he fell asleep by accident because he didn't bring the sleeping pills. <laughs> and then after night, well, that's one, when he realised because then the kids showed up in his dream. Yeah, and he so was then like, he started chasing he was like, Whoa, it. Whoa, something's going on. Yeah. So like, okay, fine, but like, it's pretty negligent to take sleeping pills on your job. Yeah. And then when your little sister's there, and like, 
I don't even know. How about the sister so How about the boring? cop who is like to your man's daughter for oh some reason? In it, and you just whispered to me like 10 minutes before, yeah, she's his daughter. And also, no, as the soon second as, we met Matthew The second Lillard. we met Matthew Lillard, he's like acting creepy and, and like, is Matthew killer. Lillard. So we're yeah. like, okay, so he's the killer. Um, and now, and okay, then he disappears. For Spoilers for Scream 1. If you have not watched Scream 1, yeah. skip forward 60 seconds. And if you haven't watched it, <laughs> then you've probably guessed from the segue of what <laughs> Cathy's about no. to say. No, uh-huh. of course not. No, skip no, no. 60 seconds now To be fair That's 20 um, years ago What's the statute five, of limitations On spoilers I'm saying skip 60 seconds Okay so Dave, You're wasting 60 seconds Go This film had the audacity To try And Do the scream twist With the same actor like, <laughs> Yeah There was How no twist How dare you The moment we met him We were like Oh so he's How the killer How dare you make Matthew the moment, Lillard The moment we met him We were like Oh so he's the killer <laughs> And then when we meet the, the cop We're like Oh so that's his daughter And then he takes Don't off bother And he takes off the mask Like it's supposed to be A big shot no, He takes off the mask Like it's the end of screen <laughs> And we were like Oh the camera lingers on him And like Oh my god It's the only other character In the movie He's literally like It's like if Scooby Doo It's like an episode of Scooby-Doo, which, Scooby-Doo. Oh, which he is also in that's funny maybe that's why I'm thinking of it it's where it's like pathetic. oh it's the groundskeeper the only other person and that we met and the thing is right okay this <laughs> might be aimed at a different a younger audience <laughs> yeah. don't know about Scream right therefore this may have come a surprise to them and then if that's the case then why use the guy from Scream you're either signposting it to us or you're not well give what's Ma- this give, film doing uh, give Matthew Lillard work and I'll, and I'll applaud the film for doing that I mean the best because he I is great what, the best scene in the whole film was and I truly mean this was the scene where he's on the phone recording a voicemail to the main character he gives so much in that phone briefing about the job yeah, he's such yeah. a good actor and yeah, he brings yeah, so yeah. much life to the film that, but he that, also signposted that he's a crazy <laughs> crazy amusement park owner who makes animatronics the only good I mean, scenes in the movie were the ones at the beginning in his office like it felt like oh the film's getting us somewhere yeah 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 like there's a mystery also can we talk about the ant what the fuck is up with her she has this like incredibly complex plot yeah. to try and gain like child social wealth child support payments like and she's, and she's spending the- thousands. She's hired a lawyer. She's spending like so. She's not interested in the child's welfare. But I think she is. You see, but the film confused us because he's saying she's not interested. She just wants this welfare check. It's like, well, mate, the welfare check clearly isn't very good because because you, you you're no getting money. that. Yeah, and you have I no mean, money. like I just don't understand. It didn't and make then, any sense. And then she's so I thought, oh, she actually is looking out for the kids' welfare. But then meanwhile, she's paying someone two hundred dollars to like trash this. Amusement thing. But also, what is going the guy on? Who his job. What is going on in this movie, which is nominally about five haunted animatronic <laughs> puppets, that we are spending a scene in a diner with an ant character explaining yeah. to the fake babysitter and her brother? It's just like you are going through loops just to give us some cannon fodder. Basically, yeah. they needed some to create a reason for um, the some people to but be there didn't. to be murdered they could but, I'm have, like, but they could have just sent like local teenagers in yeah just do anything where, so like, elaborate this film could have lost 45 minutes all of that like every single bit of that plot accepting fine and Ant who wants custody and he therefore needs because we do need a justification for him saying in this job so he is like yeah I need this job because my aunt's trying to get custody okay fine that's grand that's all we needed of the aunt. She needed like one threatening scene with him. Yeah, she's in At it. At the very for beginning, the he kicks the shit out of a guy. Oh, that in was kind of interesting, actually. That was interesting, yeah. but he he did it too violently. He should he would have been in prison at this point, yeah. or the kid would have been taken off him. He wouldn't have beaten someone up that publicly and that violently and have seemingly zero repercussions other than losing his job so again I think they should have just got rid of that because they were like hinting at more about his character but then they never like followed it through and I think the other thing they should have got rid of completely is the cop daughter character because every time she was on screen we were just confused I was but like, you need is she a ghost but you see you need why is she you here need, um, you need a character who understands what's going on to explain it to you she's, but her she's an ex- too ambiguous she's an exposition though. person but she was but it was just confusing. Sorry, she, Why is she yeah, a cop? I mean, I'm totally with you. Like, yeah. what is she doing in this whole movie? Her, uh, what is her motivation? Like At someone... one point, she's like, never take this girl back here. But five minutes ago, you and her were building forts yeah. with, 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 the, with animatronic the animatronic puppets. So yeah. I don't understand your motivation, lady. And why is she a cop? Because the thing is, if you want to have a character there to explain how things work, fine. That can be the caretaker. She I... could be... 
anyone like she didn't have to the whole plot of her being a cop and like it just there was way too much happening and yeah you're right like the fact that basically what's really interesting when you think about it and I'm thinking about this more than I ever intended to <laughs> if you've got five ghost animatronic things <laughs> just what a, se- like, what a sentence they were like the F plot in this movie <laughs> yeah yeah they exactly no time <laughs> and I wonder if this is going back to that thing about it being an adaptation that like if all of those things are in the game and maybe work or maybe they're over a couple of games if it's a series what? and this is speculation on my part trying to bring them all together into a movie is very incoherent exactly I, he, and I think that's what's gone wrong here because I would imagine please write in people who have played the game but I would imagine that the game is you are the security guard you are in that location and there are scares yeah and you experience them and you probably and I would imagine there's a little history. bit of plot but but this, this is like okay we, we've now got a movie and I noticed the um, person that created the game wrote this movie as well which is another reason maybe why it's treated so like so seriously because um, probably they were like well The Last of Us took its source material this seriously yeah exactly so like, I'm like that's a HBO I drama I almost wish somebody else uh, that, that, that he'd written it with somebody else um, to with a bit of perspective perhaps. well it's really hard but, to kill your own darlings right? exactly yeah. that's what I'm saying and um, but but that's what I think's happened here I think they were like okay we got to make this into a plot and a movie so we need a character that needs a reason to be there we need stakes we need someone to be at risk you write a daughter Steve in Ulrich or you Matthew need- Lillard <laughs> yeah. and we couldn't afford Steve Ulrich <laughs> So, so. I'm like, so suddenly, as you've nailed it there, I mean, like, the animatronic characters become the F plot. Were- and then you're spending all this time over, like, a custody battle with an ant for a... And also, for the a- film is called Five Nights at Freddy's. And, okay, two things we have to say. First of all, the Five Nights were not signposted, so we couldn't keep track of no. what night was when. Secondly, I didn't know which one Freddy was. There was always <laughs> I think, animatronics. I think it was the bear. And I was like... But the place was... But called- which one is it? Cause, I- because he got no more screen time than the others. Yeah, exactly. None of them really were... They did nothing. Dis- ...indistinguishable at all. The one that got the most screen time was the monstrous cupcake. Yeah, was that one of them? It was one of them, yeah. <laughs> okay, I gotta say, I, I, in the film's favour, though, one of the most horrifying moments to me, though, was when the... Um, the cop delivers the line it's not just their spirits their bodies are in there too and that actually creeped me out no time. because at that point I was, it didn't creep me out at all because I was just like why is this cop been in like 20 scenes <laughs> at this point and never told him any of this before I know actually the worst bit was when she realises that her father um, like kidnapped his brother and she knows it and she says nothing but I mean in fairness it, she seems that's to why be, they're building forts but she seems to be in some sort of like <coughs> a disturbing controlling relationship with her dad right so that's okay but then like that fine I, I appreciate that for the character but then she's kind of 75% hinting at him at all times anyway so she either should have been hinting him nothing or just told him yeah because us watching someone half hinting to a character is just not interesting um, anyway, I think we need to wrap up. We've talked about this movie more than it's due. Uh, I am very disappointed. This is like the worst film I've seen in, in ages. I was so bored. It was just boring. Yeah. That's all it was. Like, if it was on TV and we weren't at the cinema, I'd have actually just turned it off. Like, oh, I definitely. I wouldn't have finished it. We, we started a film last night, which we did turn off. Also a horror <laughs> film. Another Halloween teen yeah. horror movie. What's it called? It was called Totally Killer on yeah. Prime Video. We, had, we couldn't finish it. But it yeah, so I, w- I wish I could have turned this off. <laughs> but... <laughs> I mean, but anyway, we had fun we talking about the it. the cinema, but it's not one you'd like leave the cinema no, over, no, no. you know? Um, right. Okay, well, if you liked uh, listening to us talk about this, please head over to wherever you listen to podcasts and rate us five stars. We always forget to ask that. Yes, that'd be lovely. Please do it. It makes a really big difference, actually. So if you whether you leave a recommendation uh, or you leave five stars or if you actually just refer the podcast to a friend and if somebody, you know, likes talking about movies, recommend the podcast to them. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, yeah, or we're on um, Instagram or Letterbox at the Cinemile. So head over and talk to us there, or just email us the Cinemile at gmail.com. Bye. Thanks for listening. Why do I always get the weirdos? I'm Laura. I'm Lauren. And this is Go Love Yourself. She went, You're 26. <laughs> I was like, size 26, yeah. And she was like, oh, right, right, that makes sense. This is the show where we're learning to love ourselves a little more and taking you along with us. I grew up never seeing anybody that looked like me and that made me feel like not part of society, like almost like not a woman because I just never felt like I fit in. If you've got a relative that is mean about your body, Laura, what do we say to them? 